This is Montego Bradley from Fans of Patrol, and you're listening to the Geek World All Stars Podcast Network. Broadcasting very fast and very dangerous from the planet Malastare. You are listening to So Wizards. You're the thinking, you said people are gonna die? The only podcast to make the Kessel run in under 12 parsecs. There will be no one to stop us this time. What's going on, everybody? It is time for episode number 299 of the Soul Wizard Podcast. I'm your host, Joey DiCarlo. My co-hosts are the queen of all nerds, Aubrey Litchfield. Sean Flynn, you must come with us. <laughs> and the expert, Mr. Marquis, Markellis Reagans. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. You. Our listening to So Wizard Podcast, where three friends discuss the world of nerd podcasting weekly on the Geek World All Stars Podcast Network. This week, I think we've got a tiny bit of news to talk about, and then we've got Markellis's pick for I Hate You Now Watch. Ben Kingsley and Jillian Anderson are robot overlords. <laughs> but before we get into all that, how is everyone doing? Aubrey, how's quarantine treating you? It's pretty good. I am uh, back to work. <gasps> um, <laughs> you may do deliveries and pickups um so i was able to come back and um and work at the brewery i have not much contact with people um that's kind of nice so i get to sit there i watched robot overlords <laughs> <laughs> i wrote a couple papers um so it's nice i'm i'm glad to be back to work because i felt like such a loser not working that's good and you're feeling better you're feeling up to working now yeah um my bronchitis has been gone for a couple weeks now and i'm almost done with school too so it, it's kind of nice nice awesome well how about you mark Ellis? how is the uh corona madness treating you this week uh it is about the same the days are flying by, man. Like I, I'm not paying attention to like what day of the week it is. And before I know it, the weekend is like here. So it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm still getting used to it. Are you watching a lot of movies and TV or are you just like sleeping and working? I really want to watch a lot of movies. Uh, I have a lot of things on deck. I haven't watched anything except for what we are, so, what we were supposed to be watching for the show. But I also started a new project, which I probably shouldn't have done, but I finally found my creative uh, mojo, so I have to take advantage of it. I can't, I'm not going to say what it is, because it's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous, but it gives me something to do at night. Awesome. Well, as for me, um, I really haven't been doing much. You know, I'm still an essential worker who has to work my regular work schedule, so I haven't been hanging out at home too much, but I've been sleeping, working watching uh all the movies we have to watch for the show and i've been working my way through season one of clone wars and the other day which was as we record this yesterday uh was the 25th anniversary of my first date with my wife so Aww. it's great and i'm such a sap when it comes to that stuff um but i couldn't we couldn't do anything like, we couldn't go out to eat or go walk around the mall or something like <laughs> everything's closed <laughs> there's nothing to do so you should have uh, um relived your first date we can't there's no way to go to it. nothing's open could have figured it out had janine been like the waitress or something <laughs> oh christ <laughs> um but this year coming up in a few months is our 20th wedding anniversary yeah there you go so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we had big plans for, not big plans, but we had plans for doing something, uh, maybe going away overnight somewhere or going away for a couple of days. And that's just all out the window at this point. So uh, at this point, I'm just hoping it would be nice to go out of the house and maybe hold my wife's hand and walk around somewhere. <laughs> that's, that's about as exciting as it's going to get at this point because everything's closed. But good times, good times. Enough about us, guys. Let's talk about us. Mark Ellis, tell the listeners where they can find more So Wizard Podcast. 
All right. So everybody can go to SoWizardPodcast.com where you will find new episodes every week. Uh, you'll find movie reviews from yours truly, Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu streaming picks from our buddy, the awesome Adam Wallyhawk. Uh, you'll also find our merchandise there. You can purchase some of our So Wizard t-shirts and sweatshirts and look good while you're representing the show. Uh, another great way to support our show is by doing your Amazon shopping through the link that we keep right on the website. You do your uh, shopping there, you receive your products, and that way you help out our tiny little podcast. Uh, You can also find our social media links there. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so definitely get at us. Uh, You can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review while you're there. Uh, You can also find us on the Stitcher Radio app for your tablet or smartphone. We're on Podbean, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and YouTube, where videos are going up almost every week. We have a Patreon, so if you want to support us monthly, you can receive bonus content from everyone here at the show. A shout out to all of our podcasting family in the Geek World All Stars Podcasting Network. Back to you, Joey. Stop hurting my head, please, alien. It's a little sneak of uh, the movie we watched this week. Oh, God. All right. Well, uh, you said you had some news, Mark Ellis, so let's see what you got. Yo, pump it up. It's time for the news. Yo, we getting ready to bring you the news, boy. All right. So this week in nerdy news, it isn't really any big stories, just a couple of uh, quick bullet points that I wanted to touch on. For some reason, Trolls World Tour has kind of turned the movie industry on its head. Uh, you know, we talked about them releasing the movie to the home market uh, since all of the theaters are closed. And Universal made so much money with this movie that they were bragging about it to the point. Yeah, to the point that uh, AMC theaters were like, well, fuck you, Universal. If that's where you're going to be, we're not going to show any of your movies. Now, obviously, this is just, you know stupid talk and is going to be water under the bridge in fact by the time this episode comes out it'll probably be old news but i think it's kind of funny that there's like these two entities that are kind of fighting over some uh scraps so i i I don't know i think it's kind of funny what do you guys think of uh trolls world tour upending the movie industry let's start with uh let's start with aubrey since you've seen it i liked it um i think it's a little silly for anybody to fight over anything right now but the movie was really good now, do you think it set a precedent so that maybe moving forward, this is the way that we should be watching movies at home instead of instead of going to the theaters? Um, I think it should be. <sighs> so it's tough. I I think it should be an option, but at the same time, I don't want it to kill the movie theater industry because I I don't mind going to the movie theaters, and no one really likes it. So, um, it it wouldn't be a bad thing to have it as an option, but I also. Maybe for select movies, it could be an option. Mm-hmm. I don't know. All right. So Trolls 3, it hits theaters and it hits uh, home at the same on the same day. What are you going to do? What do you choose? Um, Death. <laughs> <laughs> Noah would cho- choose to go to the theater. Yes. I would probably, in that movie, I would probably watch at home. Okay. All right. Fair but enough. it all depends. In certain movies, I would go to the theater for like Star Wars, but certain movies i'd stay home for that i didn't really care too much about right so joy what about you what do you think of this cat fight going on between uh the theaters and the uh, movie studios i think it's kind of ridiculous i mean trolls world tour made good money on demand but it still didn't make it still hasn't like it's not successful it hasn't become a blockbuster isn't profitable from being on demand and it just wasn't a complete and utter flop because it couldn't come out in theaters Plus, you're looking at it's like unprecedented times right now. Like people are trapped inside. You can't go see it in the theater if you wanted to. Like, you don't don't have a choice. And it was a kid's movie. So it's a little different. You know, a lot of people were like stuck home with their kids. They're like, all right, fuck this. 20 bucks. Just watch this movie as much as you can for two days. I don't know. It's just it doesn't seem like a good control group for the experiment of the success (laughs) of video on demand. if, If you ask me, like, but. I know there's lots of people that like to say want they want this so bad. They they hate going to movies. They want new release movies at home. They're willing to pay twenty to dollars or more to rent it. But I, I think once it's it's something people actually want to watch, like 
like really wanted to watch like Black Widow or Wonder Woman, James Bond, like any of the bigger movies that were supposed to come out, like to piracy is it, just out of control. Yeah. And like, it's just not going to work. You can't make a $200 million like action movie, Marvel movie, DC, you know, whatever, and then release it at home only and expect to make the money that they make at the theater back. Like it's just not going to happen. <laughs> so you're either going to give up really big blockbuster movies to be able to not have to go to the movie theater or you're going to have to go to the movie theater. That's all there is to it. It just doesn't work. I don't see how I'm sure in the future, at some point in the future, <laughs> dude, there won't be any more movie theaters. Let's be real. Right. <laughs> but yeah, you know, just like, you know, that you know, 30 years when I was a kid, we used to go to the mall all the time. Like, nobody really goes to the mall that much anymore. Not just because of coronavirus, but like, you know, things change, life changes. There's no big arcades like there used to be, you know, it's just not, it's not the same, but, so maybe eventually, but now it's just not there yet. You know, the, the economics of it just don't make sense. And, and I, I love going to the movies. I have since I was a little, little, little kid. And uh, I've always loved going to the movies. And even today, I like going to the movies with my kids. I like going, sometimes I go by myself, <laughs> depending on what we're watching for the podcast. But I love going to the movies. And you can't really replicate that experience at home. Like no matter how awesome it would be to watch, have been able to sit down and just watch in game at my house. You can't replicate seeing that in a packed, sold out theater opening night with people just going wild the whole time. Like it, you just don't get that experience. So, I, I would much rather prefer to go to the movies than watch a movie at home, unless, <laughs> unless you know what I mean. Like some things you can. Like I'm, I haven't watched. We're gonna do Parasite next month. Yep. Or this month for uh, Patreon, and obviously I didn't get a chance to see it in theaters, so I'm gonna watch it at home. I don't think I'm missing out a ton by watching that. I'm like. TV instead of in the theater, but to see something like, you know, right, not to open that can of worms, but you know, something like Rise of Skywalker, or Endgame, even Invisible Man, and some of the other movies, like I wouldn't want to see those on my TV for the first time. I'd, I want to see those in the theater. So I, I am on the side of theaters. I, I don't think Trolls World Tour is a good barometer for this, and I definitely don't think it's going to make as much money as they think. So. I don't know, man. It's pretty successful. It, it, it's only three weeks in, so you know it could turn around. I do think it, it's it's funny to to think of a world where, like James Bond and Fast and the Furious, won't be playing in one of like the biggest movie chains. I think that's a it's an odd. Oh, that, odd that they're gonna they're gonna fix that. Yeah, that's exactly. Not gonna, that's not gonna last. <laughs> exactly. I know. But for a good hour, it was fun. It was fun to watch. All right. So then another quick. Well, actually, you know what? Never mind. I don't have any more news. I'm gonna save that for my recommendations. <laughs> All right. Well, Trolls World Tour is the number one trending story on So Wizard Podcast. But Mark still won't do it for the show. Uh, no. I mean, I, 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 I'm, going, I'm going to watch the movie. I'm just not going to do it for the show. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. We got plenty of video on demand new movies to watch after next week. So Awesome. Well, I guess we'll take a quick break and we're going to come back and look at Robot Overlord. Can you imagine a world immune to all forms of cancer? Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for our fourth annual live stream for the cure. And this year, we need your help more than ever. Please join us May 27th through May 31st for 48 hours of live content from guests and podcasts around the world. We'll be aiming for our most ambitious goal to date as we try to raise $10,000 for the Cancer Research Institute. Please visit www.livestreamforthecure.com for more information on this year's event and how you can be a part of it. Together, we can make a difference. And we're back. All right. I Hate You Now Watch Month rolls on. Mark Ellis's pick is this week's movie. Robot Overlords. Mark Ellis, why did you pick this movie? Hmm. Well, I discovered something during this, uh, thanks to a Dino King, actually. <laughs> You're envious of the blind. <laughs> YouTube has its own, like, uh, channel for movies where they do a lot of, uh, you know, just a lot of movies with ads. Um, but when you watch it on TV, like, none of the ads show up, which is actually kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, as I was looking for Dino King... I came across a ton of movies that were free on YouTube. So I watched a few of them and I picked one that I thought would be horrible uh, so I can torture you guys, but be entertaining for me. 
Uh, and that's how he stumbled across Robot Overlords. All right. And what is Robot Overlords about? Robot Overlords. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next question. <laughs> it was a very timely film. It, it really was. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Robot Overlords is basically about the uh, the metallic version of the coronavirus keeping people indoors. Robot Overlord, <laughs> shit is real. I'm telling you, shit is real. Shit is getting real. Woo! Um, and it's about a plucky group of teenagers who are who decided that they want to uh, escape their cat captivity and start the fight to the robots. It's basically like a Hunger Games, like YA novel, but it's a cheesy yeah. sci-fi movie. Yeah, well, basically, like, robot aliens showed up and defeated all of humanity in, like, six days. And now they'll leave you alone as long as you stay in your house. That's right. Starring Sir Bane Kingsley and Jillian Anderson for some reason. So... All right, uh, Aubrey, I guess we'll get started. What did you think of Robot Overlords, non-spoiler? I didn't hate it. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't. I think part of it is that um, <laughs> I've watched Doctor Who, and um, this, this is a British movie to its core, really. Um, and so I really enjoyed it. I don't even know what to say to that. All right, Mark Ellis. <laughs> Seriously, after watching Dino King, this movie is like Avengers Endgame. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you can make it through Dino King. You can make it through almost anything. Yeah, like I said, this movie is, it's not great, but it's, it's entertaining enough. It's entertaining enough. And it, you can definitely see some parallels between this cheesy 2014 movie and today, ironically. But, Joey, what did you well, think of it? <laughs> I did not like this movie very much. I, I thought it was boring as fuck. Oh, come on. God, it was physically painful. I At one point, I pushed up on the remote, and I was like, oh, fuck. And it had only been 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is going to be a tough one. And then, <laughs> at one point, my wife and my kids went for a walk. And they came back, and my wife's like, you're still watching this shitty movie. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah it's, it feels like it's been on for three days she's like tell me about it <laughs> oh, God, i'm sorry um yeah i thought it was really boring and it kind of sucked <laughs> but there's not really any way to talk about robot overlords without uh without spoiling it so i guess if somebody dared to go on amazon prime or youtube and watch it for free maybe they want to come back after the spoilers <laughs> So, Mark, <laughs> let's drop the drop. Let's do it. Spoiler alert. I had seen the future, and I had to prevent it. All right, Mark. Give me some things you liked about Robot Overlords. Uh, I liked that this movie really wanted to be Transformers. That I thought was really <laughs> cool. It reminded me of, like, those uh, Asylum movies, like Transmorphers. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Mega Shark versus Octo... <laughs> Gator. <laughs> exactly. There's one of those movies that uh, that stars Tiffany and Debbie Gibson. <gasps> yes. And they get a brawl at some point at the end of the movie. That's right. I do kind of remember that. I'm, I'm going to find a name of that. We're doing that next. <laughs> you just made the list. As an aside, I just followed Debbie Gibson on TikTok, and I got to say, you still got it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I really like the uh, I really like the special effects. This was an independent movie. Um, you know, and the special effects weren't amazing, but they were believable enough. Um, I liked the wise ass kids. I thought their performances were really good. And yeah, it's like a, it's like it's a fun YA kind of hero's journey movie that is goofy and not dangerous at all. Uh, very cheesy, but it's in, it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable. So I. I liked a lot of this movie, even though it's it's bad. All right. Uh, Aubrey, what did you like about this movie? Um, it, it has that cheesy sci-fi BBC feel to it, which I really enjoy. 
Um, the, uh, the what kind of feel? <laughs> the the TV British sci-fi BBC British Brit- British broadcasting company. Joey, get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> I, was yeah. say, I think we we watch very different things. We yeah. BBC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I thoroughly enjoy Doctor Who, so this is like right up that same alley. So I I watched this movie and I was like, why is this Mark's? I hate you not watch this. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate this movie at all. I'd watch it again. Ah, look at that. <laughs> Now, Joey, I know you slept through most of it, but what is was there anything that you liked I didn't about it? Sleep through it. I watched. I, I didn't sleep through. It. I watched the movie. Um, I appreciate that this was a very low budget, somewhat. Like, I mean, how low budget was this? That had like actual name actors in it. Like, I want to say it was like, I want to say it was like twelve mil. I think. All right, that's not like super low budget. Oh, no, I, take, I mean it was a low. I take it back. Twenty one mil. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, this is not really a low budget movie, but. Um, it, it had a lot of big picture ideas. Yes. <laughs> and some, and, and, and there was some cool ideas in the movie and there's, you know, a lot there. It's not like this is like some shit, um, idea. Like, it's not like we're watching fucking like fateful findings or something <laughs> like, which, Ooh, that would be a good future pick. Now that would really get Aubrey back for Dino King. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's not like. It, the story idea is incompetent or anything and and like there's cool ideas and they they do pretty decent with with some of the special effects like mm-hmm. some of the special effects are good when the a lot of it with, with the kids running from the big robots with the claw and stuff yep um it, obviously it's it's special effects like it's not i'm not fucking talking about like star wars here or something but it, it looks pretty damn good you know they put a lot of money into some of that stuff but then there's other special effects that are horrendous And we'll get into that in a little bit. But, I mean, there's some cool, like, big picture stuff. Um, It it is funny, though, that you can tell in the scenes that he's in, Ben Kingsley is acting circles around everyone else in the movie. Yeah. And he's probably trying about 25%. (laughs) I I noticed it in a couple of the scenes where, especially where he's interacting with the kids, where you can just tell this guy is a real actor. (laughs) Like, this guy is on for fucking robot overlords <laughs> and uh and, and it's she's just on another level than the other people in the movie but um yeah i mean there's some cool concepts and ideas that go with the plot i i i, I liked a lot of the ideas in the movie is just it, it just doesn't execute them good enough you know it's like mm. i really would love to build a cool like i would like to build a, a two scale like human size castle gray skull in my backyard but if you gave me a bunch of boards and nails, I don't think I could pull it off. <laughs> so it's a cool idea to build this, but I don't think I could fucking do it. So, you know, the guys had a great story. I don't know if they maybe should just handed it off to someone else to make the movie. But, um, yeah, yeah, that was about it for me. Things I liked. Well, and that and Jillian Anderson is still really hot. So mm-hmm. it's actually hotter. Right. I think now. Like the older she gets, the hotter she gets. It's crazy. I used to have a big poster of her in, in like her underwear in my room when, when the X Files was at its height. Yeah, like that Rolling Stone cover. Is that where it was from? Um, I don't know where it was from, but yeah, I had a, I had a gigantic uh, like poster of her, her underwear on my door when I was a kid. Not a kid, but I think it was probably like nineteen, twenty years old. So that's fair. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Jen still married me. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, but let's get into things we didn't like. Aubrey, what didn't you like about this movie? Um, the ending, really. I felt like it started really strong for me. And then probably about, I'd say like the 45-minute mark is where it started to go downhill for me. Like, I feel like it was a great concept, great idea. It could have been executed really well, but like at that point, 45 minute mark i remember looking at it and i was like ah oh, this is where we start to really mess up and then it felt too cheesy and like it just completely derailed like the father was this this war guy who um had the implant taken out of his head but somehow he just doesn't even try to look for his family and instead it's like 
I knew you guys were still alive, <laughs> but I didn't try to look for you. No, he did go look for them. There was nothing left of their neighborhood. It was just a big crater. And then she said, but oh, yeah, they moved like us this... to the street, to uh, the south end or whatever. But this boy finds him in, like, a night. And the dad couldn't have done the same. Like, he was somehow some part of their militia. And he couldn't figure out to go to the school and figure out where they were <laughs> put. Like, I don't know. <laughs> that, was, that was his way out. He's like, all right, I'm done with his wife and kids. I'm out. <laughs> I'm staying out. <laughs> yeah, fuck these guys. Um, and then it just, it, like, I feel like there could have been more to it that really, like, they they put all their budget into the beginning of this movie. And then by the end of it, they're like, shit, we really got to wrap this up. And uh, really just it went too far off with it. Um, so I felt like that could have been done a lot better. The mediator was creepy. <laughs> super, <laughs> super fucking creepy. But overall, there wasn't much that like I seriously hated about this movie. Because I accepted it as a really cheesy British movie. And again, like I love Doctor Who. So if I can watch Doctor Who... This is a cakewalk because it's like same on the same platform. Okay. Um, but yeah, I I did not like how it started off super strong and then by the end of it, I was kind of disappointed. All right. Well, how about you, Mark Ellis? Uh, yeah, there's some huge plot holes in this movie. <laughs> like you could drive a truck through them, but I didn't care. I didn't care. Like Ben Kingsley taking Gillian Anderson to the castle at the end. And then the kids have to find her. And yet they're already there. It takes the, it, for some reason, they kind of leave at the same time. But it takes the kids like days to get to the castle. Uh, and Ben Kingsley and Jillian Ennis are already there. And then her idea to leave, like she doesn't have her implant removed at all. But she decides to leave on a horse and like run, out, just take off out of the castle with a horse for no apparent reason. Like where did, where the fuck was she going? She wasn't going home. It, it, that didn't make sense to me at all. And yeah, I agree. The mediator, that kid was uh, just, I laughed every time he came on the screen. Um, and I probably shouldn't have, but that is a, that's an idea that someone should have stopped him. Someone should have said, okay, we can't do this. I know you want to do it. We can't do it. Um, all right. Well, I will agree with Aubrey that the movie started off pretty decent. I wouldn't say it was like super strong i wasn't feeling a five out of five movie but it was at least decent um it should have stayed that scale for the whole movie <laughs> I, I anytime it tried to reach beyond you know being a more intimate story about these kids um it, it just like fell flat on its face the mediator reminded me now aubrey you have no idea what i'm talking about but mark Ellis, do you remember clutch cargo no not at all what right. is that it was like a cartoon from maybe like the 60s where they barely animated anything on screen except the people's faces were just someone's like mouth superimposed <laughs> over it. I've seen that before. I didn't know that was the name of it. It, it fucking looked like that. And all I could think of when he, the mediator would come out and be like, all right, so like the aliens land and they're like, all right, we're going to bring out this guy to talk to you guys. And like the mediator would walk out and everybody would just be like, <laughs> <laughs> and like they wouldn't be able to stop laughing until the aliens just left in shame. <laughs> because <laughs> it was bad that was bad and in the same thing like like you said aubrey like the movie's like it's doing all right you know it's not so bad and then it just like ah oh god it just goes off the as soon as they get to like the base where his dad is and they have a fucking world war ii plane for some reason and like <laughs> just like all right this is stupid <laughs> it just went off the rails um they really should have kept the movie a lot smaller and more intimate and then we've got like floating horrendously bad CG cubes. And then the kid was like flying on a spaceship and he's going to crash the spaceship into the cube. And it's just like, Oh my God, it just looked so bad. And it was just like, why, why would you like write in, write this? You know what I mean? Like you, you, you can't pull this off. Like you needed to dumb it down somehow or like dial it way back. Um, so yeah, I mean the first half of the movie was okay. And then the second half was it just a disaster. It's just such a mess of bad CG, bad <laughs> green screen, bad storytelling. It just goes off the fucking rails. So, 
yeah, I, I didn't like that. But mostly it was just a lot of this movie is just done in by hellishly bad special effects and like way too much ambition yep. versus skill. So yep. it got that mediator was fun. when he fell <laughs> <laughs> off the plane. It like fell on the ground. I could. I, I almost fell out of the chair laughing. It was so bad. I, anyway, I actually like you're. You're right. the The ambition that they had was way higher than what they could reach. But I do appreciate the fact that they tried it. You know, there is a scene where the kid uh, is controlling the ship, and he crashes it into the other ship, and he dives off. And it's all one shot: him diving off, him free falling in front of the giant cube, him trying to use his powers to catch one of the flying drones and it not, and he doesn't catch it. And then he uses it, try to use his powers to catch the second one. And he does. And that whole scene of him free falling is all done in one shot. I thought that was actually pretty cool in any other movie, like any other like Marvel superhero movie, that would have been an, uh, an amazing scene. Really yeah, they cool. would have had the money and the expertise <laughs> to pull it off. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. But the fact that they tried it, I give them, I give him credit for that. Well, it reminds me of when like your kid hands you like a picture and it's just like a bunch of fucking scribbles, and it's like, oh, what is this? Oh, it's Spider Man. Oh, wow. Well, you did a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I don't look like fucking Spider Man, but you know, you gotta try your best. But. One one of the other things I actually did really like is the very beginning of the movie. Like these the robots, they come to Earth. And they force everyone to stay inside of their houses. But this one guy is like, fuck that. I'm going outside. Like he has, he doesn't have like a goal to go anywhere or do anything. He just wants to be outside. Even though he has like a, what, a nine-year-old son in the background. And he's just like, you know what? You can't tell me what to do. This isn't the way to live. I want to be outside. And I'm like, hmm, where have I heard that before? Like recently. Bro, it hit me right in the field. <laughs> Right in the fields. So he goes outside and he gets killed by coronavirus or the robots, whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> it's like you should have stayed Guess your what? ass in the home. Baby. <laughs> Guess what, bitch? <laughs> Robot overlords. <laughs> so, All right. Well, I guess we'll uh, we'll give it a score and uh, we'll wrap it up here. Aubrey, what do you got from zero to five? For Robot I'm going to give it a, uh, a 3.5. Jesus. <laughs> I did not hate it. I did not find it to be horrible at all. I wish that the ending was better, um, but I didn't hate the ending that it was. Like, it, I mean, it was bad, but I, I, I wasn't like super angry. <sighs> Mark, you failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what do you give it, Mark Ellis? Uh, I, you know, what? I agree with Aubrey. I'm going to give it a three point five. Also. Um, oh my God! The reason they had a uh, old World War II plane is because it didn't have any digital uh, instruments that the robots could take over. Well, no, I mean I understood why <laughs> why they were using it. It's just like what was the point of? <laughs> Did you ever see a little movie called Independence Day where the pilot like saves the day? <laughs> That's I never why. heard of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Oh boy! All right. Well, I I'm gonna say probably like a two out of five. Wow. I would probably have gone like one, but I'll give it an extra star for a uh, hot milf Julian Anderson in it. So sure. even though she seems like she's sleepwalking through the movie, <laughs> she, she totally does. She's just like, can I just use my British accent for anything? Like, oh, you could be in Robot Overlords. Done. <laughs> Where do I sign? Does she have a British accent in real life? I don't think she does, but she's in. You know, I don't know. She's in a ton of British stuff. Like every time I see her, that's not or she's not Scully. Uh, she has a British accent. Maybe she does have a British accent. I don't know. Oh, maybe Scully yeah, was a she... lie. Maybe she's been British this whole time. Ah, it just makes her hotter. <laughs> she's it a says mystery. she's a British actress. <gasps> there you go. The world is a lie. Trust no one. But it's it says she was born in Chicago. Interesting. Well, you, know, you know what they say? Robots can't lie. <laughs> Yeah, um, this is not great. I, I don't ever want to watch this again, and I wouldn't suggest anyone to bother watching it either. But uh, I'm gonna get you guys real bad next time we're picking movies. Just so you know, whatever, dude. Dino King broke me, so I, I'll take anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like I went way too easy on you guys with uh, Dead or Alive, and then you guys both liked Mark's pick. <laughs> <laughs> 
So suburban Sasquatch it is, but um, great. So <laughs> let's finish it up today. Let's get some recommendations for the listeners out there. Aubrey, what do you got? Uh, I have been watching Hoarders on Hulu. <laughs> that has been, that's all like those types of shows have always been my guilty pleasure. Hoarders, my secret addiction, my 600 pound life. Like I love those shows. Cause I don't have to think about them. I just sit there and watch other people's lives go to shit. So if you haven't watched Hoarders, go ahead and watch it. It is a fun time suck. Awesome. How about you, Mark Ellis? Uh, yeah. So a couple of things I want to recommend. Number one, uh, May 4th, if you have Disney plus, you're going to be able to stream all of the Star Wars movies, uh, the Skywalker Saga movies, that is. Episodes 1 through 9 will be available on Disney Plus starting May 4th. Very excited. Very, very excited. Uh, so, yeah. So, definitely watch that. Uh, and starting May 15th, if you haven't watched Avatar The Last Airbender, the animated TV show from Nickelodeon, which is arguably one of the best animated shows ever, it's going to be streaming on Netflix starting May 15th. So, uh, if you haven't seen it, this is your chance to watch it. It is amazing. It's so good. It it, it kind of ruined Star Wars for me. That's how good it is. So, uh, yeah. Rise of Skywalker, Avatar The Last Airbender. Well, you got a couple things right in there. Rise of Skywalker and ruin Star Wars together. So, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I will suggest that everybody goes to SoWizardPodcast.com where they can find the podcast every week. Links to all our social media accounts on the right-hand side of the page. Movie reviews, streaming picks, so much more. SoWizardPodcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, just about anywhere under the sun that you find your favorite podcast. We are there. Check out our YouTube channel. Search so Wizard Podcast on YouTube and check us out. Tons of free exclusive content. Adam just dropped a uh, unboxing video of an expensive Avengers Endgame Thor statue that he got, which I thought was really cool. And there's other stuff on there as well. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com backslash So Wizard Podcast. Monetarily support the show and get extra exclusive episodes. Uh, this past month, we reviewed The Hunt and... The next month we'll be reviewing Parasite. It's the only place to hear those reviews is when you support us on Patreon. Uh, I will suggest that you uh, check out. Uh, there's a game coming out for PS4 and Xbox One called Daymare 1998. It's been out on Steam for a while. So if you want to play it now, you can play it on Steam. But otherwise, it's a survival horror game, much like Resident Evil 2. Actually, uh, it's like a 10 or 12 person development team was working on a their own remake of uh, Resident Evil 2 and then Capcom announced they were making theirs <laughs> and they had to change a lot of stuff in it and make their own game out of it but it, it's it's pretty cool it's a lot of fun um, if you like those kind of games which I love survival horror games then you may like it so check out Daymare 1998 uh, if you feel like wasting four dollars jump onto Amazon and you can rent uh, the Forbidden Dance is Lombada because that my friends is what we will be talking about next week on our very special 300th episode with special guests, Colt 45 Podcast. But that's going to do it for this week. And on behalf of my co-host, the queen of social distancing, Aubrey Litchfield. <laughs> Citizen, return to your home. Final warning. <laughs> and the expert, Mr. Marquis Marcellus Reagans. Uh, men lie, women lie, robots don't lie. <laughs> We'll see you guys next week. Good journey. <laughs>